Hello, everybody. Oh. <laughs> I'll explain that later. Maybe, maybe I won't. Um, I just have one very black nostril, and the other one is not. And as far as I can tell, they're both normal. So, hello, everybody. Sorry, I'm late. Um, <laughs> I'm late, and not even for the reason I was going to be late. I am. Um, I was trying to make my tea fast enough. I was doing errands and stuff and I got home late. So I was trying to make my tea fast enough that I could bring it in here. But the kettle was not boiling fast enough. And I am a purist. I need my, my rolling boil, boiling water. Um, and so it wasn't boiling fast enough. And I was like trying to debate back and forth. And I think we'll be lucky if rascal sleeps for the whole duration of the call. So I don't want to keep going back and forth into the other room. So yes, I apologize for being late and for not having any tea. And let's just hope the voice holds up for the whole time. So we had a fun card to make tonight. I was trying to see if I had somewhere in the house a pinwheel, like, you know, the, the little stick where you spin, that kind of pinwheel. But uh, if I do, I have no idea where. <laughs> um, because that's what I think of pinwheel, that's what I think of. And so that's that's what I was trying to emulate, but we don't have that. But we are going to make a fun card. I am going to shift shift views because I realize now I'm on the wrong view. Do, do, do. We'll go to this one so you can see. So you can see my fun papers that I have printed. Oh, and there I am. And my camera got moved again. So now I'm like setting cockeyed to where all my projects are. Oh, the fun continues. Okay, so. Hi, it's Tracy, your neighborhood uh, paper pusher. It's show and tell with Tracy. And uh, I don't know if I already said that. So if I didn't, welcome to, to the show. Um, tonight we're making pinwheel cards. But before we do, I'm going to give you a couple of reminders. The paper pumpkin, the next one coming out, has all the in colors in it. These, oh my God, you guys, these colors are awesome. I think I showed the sneak peek last week, but this is one of the cards. And I actually, <laughs> I like the card so much. Um, actually, this, I just went and cut one set of hexagons out of each of the new DSPs, which DSPs, is that the right plural? Designer series paper, papers, DSPs, I guess it is. Um, oh, love this one. Like I so said, this, this is this like old fashioned calico, just nostalgia. Um, so these are the, and, the, and then the, Colors are just so nice. I love them. Anyways, these are the new in colors. So if you would like to have the paper pumpkin that is made with all the new in colors, that also has the golden voucher in it for a chance to win a, a I'm going to say $34. Yes, $34 Canadian gift voucher for any Stampin' Up! product. Um, 200 of the kits will have that. So this one you have to subscribe to by the 10th. So you still got a bit of time, but um, don't forget about that one. And then I'm, I'm doing my in color club, which I think is going to be fun. It's it's uh, you basically get all of the in color supplies and I have this piece of paper, so I'm not going to go through the details because when I tried to do it, looking casually over at the paper and do it, I just got everything screwed up last time. So um, but I have this little two page document. There's a little agreement you sign, but the agreement is more because it says, oh, that's what I have to do. OK, and then you always have a little reminder of what you have to do. That's like, like the real reason for that. And then I put a little bit of uh, information on here so you know what order you're getting stuff and what's your reward month and what's your celebration item month. And, but it gives you a, a pretty good idea here of what you get. So each month you get cardstock, ink, blends, DSP, ribbon, twine, decorative dots, and glimmer paper in one of the five in colors. The next month you get all of that same stuff in a different color. So by the time we're done, you will have all five of them. But instead of paying four hundred and some dollars up front, you pay eighty. It takes for three projects. Uh, you get to do a little Zoom with us. Um, there's. I'm hoping to get five people to do this club because then it'll be a full club and it'll be a lot of fun. Um, if you miss the Zoom, there's a, there's a replay. But we'll do the projects together and just chat and generally enjoy ourselves. And then um, one of uh, one of the five months, you'll get an extra twenty dollars in free stuff. And one of the five months, you will get an, a celebration item. Now you can always order more and you can top up if you want to like make those better. But 
that's what you'll get. So it'll be lots of fun. And I would like to uh, start it at the end of May. So I need people signed up by the middle of May. So you got like two or three weeks to do that. So I did put this link in my newsletter last week and I'm gonna put it in again this week or you can just ask me to send you that piece of paper and I will do that. Um, okay, so pinhole cards. So if you Google, just so you know, if you Google pinwheel cards, you'll get two things. One of them you, you'll find, and and I mean, I started with Stampin' Up! 10 years ago, and I remember a similar, like, there's I've seen all sorts of different kind of versions of them since, but in a lot of them will have a square piece of pattern paper or some form of that in the middle, and there it's sort of folded to replicate the pinwheel, you know, the stick with the spin, that kind of pinwheel. So you will get a lot of those pinwheel cards, but there's also this kind of pinwheel card. So I guess I better do it this way so you can actually see what I'm talking about. See that? How's that for a beauty of a pinwheel? Now, here's the thing. I'm going to pull this off a little bit. This card folds flat and fits in an envelope. Despite this, which I will, um, I will tell you that I learned a couple things making this card. Um, and I'm going to share those with you. I didn't change them. I just left them and I'm going to share them with you. So you can either go, hey, I like that. And I'm going to do the same thing. Or, oh, good, you told me, because now I won't waste my time and paper on doing the same thing. Because they were all great ideas. You know, how every story starts. I had a great idea. Uh, they just, a couple of them worked really well. Like, I love the front of this card, if you, if you minus this a little bit. Um, I don't mind that peeking out. It just didn't quite work how I wanted it to. But like, I just, I love the look of the front of this card. I love the stamped off stamping in the back and the, anyways, I love it. Um, so yeah, when we make card, you have to sort of plan ahead. So I'm gonna show you what I did on this one and I'm gonna show you how to do the basics of it because I need to be done by 6.45. Um, I'm gonna show you how to do the basics of putting it all together, like to cut the pieces and put it together. And then I'll have more pictures and step-by-step -step and all that stuff in my blog on Saturday, but it'll give you a good idea how to do this. Oh, and I should say thank you to V Tran, who is a demonstrator somewhere in the States. Did I look that up? I know she's in the States. I just don't know if I can tell you where in the States. Anyway, she's a lovely lady. She has the most calming voice in her videos. She has videos. I've only watched a couple of them, but and they're just so calm. And she makes really nice projects. Anyways, I got this from her. Um, I've seen a bunch of them, but hers was the one I saw that I really liked, like some of the things she had done. So that's the, the tutorial I went with. So anyways, here's the thing. The first one, this is like starting page. And then you can flip it to the next page. And this, see, hers got fancy. She did this stand up thing. And that's where some of the things went off the rails, as you can tell by my, well, maybe you can't. Oh yeah, there you can, by my bent windmill, but yeah, I'll tell you, you'll see. And then the next page. And then the next page. And then it stands up. So really you can sit it on your desk and you can, you know, rotate it around however you want. And, and I mean, you can kind of have sort of the front and you can sort of see two at a time. Um, so you're not just looking at one, but anyways. I think it's just the coolest card. And like I said, it will just prove that I, what I'm saying. My lovely stamped envelope, oops, stamped envelope. It will fit in here. Now, because of these these things, which this is part of the planning ahead thing, um, they don't work. They're, well, they do work. I mean, obviously I'm gonna put this in here and you'll see that they do work. Didn't work quite as well as I wanted, but because there's just little bits of paper, you can be a little manipulative with these and just push them where you want. But yes, it does fit in an envelope and it would be, um too thick for one stamp so it's the buck 90 something like you pay a little bit of extra postage but you could technically mail this um i tend to find when i do these bigger fancier cards it's i'm handing it to someone maybe when you put this much work in you want to see the look on their face when they open it i don't know but i feel like i'm handing it to someone okay so there we go Ta -da! and here's the thing this card is spectacular as it is it's super easy to put together Okay, so I'm going to just set this over here. Nope, yeah, I can't see. I can't have the best. I can't have everything. I was going to say, I'll just set it where we can still see it, but we can't. Okay, so here's the thing. If you take a regular piece of cardstock and you cut it in half lengthwise, you get two pieces, right? So, and this is how I like to cut my portrait bases, right? Because I like my cards to tint. Now, normally I, I will, I would score this piece here and then cut it in half. So I only have to score one, cut one, two card bases. Um, but when I was doing um, like classes, I would I, st I started to leave them unscored because if I ran out of 
any kind of cardstock, then I could use this to cut pieces out over whatever I needed to. And I didn't have to worry about wasting some if there was a big score line in the middle. But then I thought, nope, I'll just take extra pieces. So I went back scoring them again. But now in the last like few months, <laughs> I have found so many cool folds that will start with a card base. You just have to cut them or, or score them differently. Then now I'm like, oh, do I go back to not scoring my card bases? Uh, and it's really not the end of the world to score them like right before you make them. So, but anyways, this is what you need. Huh? I digress. You need a half a sheet of cardstock. So this is four and a quarter, and this is eleven. Now I'm going to cheat a little bit, and I apologize, Mary, because I'm not gloating, but I love this little mini trimmer, um, my little mini Gideon. So what we need to make this card are four um, panels. That was the word I wanted. These four panels, right? And they're all the same size, and they all happen to be two and three quarters, which if you've made any kind of mini cards or anything before, if you cut this in half, you get five and a half. If you cut five and a half in half, you get two and three quarters. So basically, if you cut a sheet of cardstock in half and then just keep, you know, you're going to have the four panels you need. So what we're ending up with is four panels that are two and three quarters. And I do like this little mini guillotine for um, cardstock. I love my trimmer for lots of things. And my trimmer does work for cardstock, but I like this one better. So anytime the paper is full enough, um, I will use this instead. Okay, so four pieces of cardstock that are two and three quarters by four and a quarter. That was one card base. And now we have our four panels. Yes, people, it was that easy. Okay, I'm gonna have to move this again because it's gonna be the way my trimmer. <laughs> that, you know what, I, in all honesty, that was probably one of the reasons I like this as much as I do is because it's short. And so I don't have to have my desk is to be able to use, because let's face it, when is my desk ever clean? So, like I said, my one camera moves, so now I'm going to be I'm going to be off kilter up here. So I'm I'm on kilter. Is that actually a word? So I'm on kilter down here. Uh, oh, that's my label for later. Okay. So now we need our DSP. I'm going to use the beautiful. I was going to say on the horizon, but now I'm now I'm doubting myself that that's actually what it's called. New Horizons, <laughs> New Horizons DSP. I love this stuff. Now, where'd my card go? Here we go. So this is all from the same package. This is from the tulip paper. And which again is also not what it's called, the flowering field paper. The back, the front side is pretty much tulips. The back side is, is kind of more geometric and cool patterns. So you can see how different these patterns are. Um, oh, here, I'll tell you the other thing too before. Forget. So you notice I cut these all the same color. When I was making this card, I thought, because when I picked out my favorite patterns is how I started. And then I decided what I was going to put on front of them. So I was like, oh, I love this one. So this one will look great on Mango Melody. And I'm like, oh, I love this one. And I can put it on, on, on um, Poppy Parade because it'll bring out the, the red tulips. And oh, I love, right? So I, I cut like half, the, half of these panels, one color and half the other, because I was thinking when the panel is open, it will go together. But as you notice, when you put it together, I, each panel is half and half of each color. Now I'm okay with the way it looks. It didn't, it didn't quite go the way I planned. Uh, I'm okay with the way it looks, but, and I, and I got away with it, I think on this card, but you're not always going to. So this time I'm gonna make them all the same color. So I don't have to worry. But I mean, it's not like they were wrong the way they were. They just, it wasn't exactly what I intended. <laughs> now, this paper I absolutely love. And I'm just gonna cut each one um, so that I get the same little dioramas that I wanted, right? You cut a strip here and a, and a strip here. Now, in the one that V did, she had, um, like some of these were white panels with like, you know, the, the biggest wish snap set? I don't think I have it close. The other one, so th this could be cardstock that you've stamped on. This could be, you know, wood grain DSP, or you could do like I did and kind of match them up. I mean, you can do all sorts of things. I'm kind of going with this. So as a note, if you're doing this, the piece of DSP you're starting with is four by four. If you're doing it um, um, two different things or different, then, then I'll tell you what the measurements are there too. Now, the one thing I did notice is on this card, <clears throat> she used DSP and I thought, I wonder if you could use cardstock. 
And then the very kind lady was nice enough to say well, five minutes after I had the thought, um, <clears throat> you can use cardstock to make this center tower, but cardstock's a bit bulkier. And so it's not as, uh, I don't want to say flimsy because that makes it sound bad. You want it to be a little more pliable to fold, but you also want it to fold flatter. So cardstock is a little stiffer and a little thicker. So it won't be quite as flat when you fold it up. And she used the beautiful brick pattern from the macrame plant set, which is not what it's called, but I don't actually own that set and I cannot for the life of me remember what that one's actually called. And so she used really pretty DSP and then I noticed she covered it all up and I thought, oh, so I don't want to say pick the ugly DSP because really there's no ugly DSP, but don't use your favorite DSP because you don't really see it. But what you do end up seeing is the inside here. You can kind of see, and I had an idea for this too, which um, I'm not quite sure how to make it come to fruition, but I'll tell you after. Um, you kind of see the inside of this. Now you don't like really see it, but you can see in it. So if anything, make the inside this piece the DSP you want to look at. Okay, so this piece is is uh, the only one that's a, like a slightly different measurement. Let's move that up there, and it is four and a half. I have so many strips of this because I use it for everything. And I love this particular side. And because it goes with this cardstock, that's what I'm going for. Oh, what did I say? Four and a half by four and a quarter is what we start with. And then for the world's easiest scoring instructions, you score at one inch, two inches. Three inches and four inches. We're basically just making the cube tower in the middle. You know what I did? I cut this the wrong side. I'm like, I just scored that last piece and thought there is no uh, paper behind what I'm scoring. I can tell by feeling it. So now I'm going to flip through my paper, which is very picked over. I'm going to find another piece of that. Not to worry because that will become a card and or something. Um. So I said four and a half, but I think I just cut it at four. Or maybe I didn't actually say four and a half. It is four and a half. There we go. Look how pretty this side is too. Oh. Um, but like I said, you don't see it. And I like the boldness, the other side. On my inside of my tower, I think will look cool. Okay, so let's try it again. Here's the other thing, don't use your cutting blade. So. <laughs> And why does that matter on that last piece I scored? Because that little half inch that was missing is the half inch you used to glue the tower together. So that's why it matters. Okay, so that's how I did it right. So four and a half by four and a quarter scored at one, two, three, four. And uh, yeah, you can kind of see the score line. You'll see it when I fold it. I'll fold that after. And then we need the DSP panels. So I'm gonna cut these now so I can just put my trimmer away and be done with them. Uh, this, so, so when you do it, you, like I said, make a plan <laughs> because it'll be a lot easier in the end. So we're going to put four different panels and you want to start with the front one. And it matters, well, it matters when you pull it up, the card out, but it matters if you put any of the pop-outs in, how you do it. So this is my favorite DSP of the package. Like, the, I mean, the, the paper's phenomenal. This one happens to be my favorite. Why? No idea, just is. So this is the one I'm going to put on the front of the card. So I'm going to try to keep these in order as I go. And I'm going to start with my pieces as four by four, because like I said, I'm making, I'm making more like a diorama type look. And so I want, um, I want it to go like this. So this is my four by four. So what we need is a piece that's one and a half, one and a half, there we go. And a piece that's two and a half by four. So that adds up to four. So if you start with four by four, so that, that when I do my card, it's like this, right? Okay, so I'm gonna put those together. That's my front one. Come over here and flip them over. Um, and then the other ones I might, I, as I go, I might change my mind, but I kind of had a rough idea with order they were gonna go in. And I'm still just gonna do them all four by four. So I will tell you that I'm very excited today as I sit here and cut these pieces, which perhaps I should have done ahead of time. But I was getting groceries. Um, the forecast is for rain. 
Now the forecast, I, I, I get such amusement from watching the forecast. I watch the weather channel and God bless forecasters because I can't imagine they have an easy job. Um, and I do know, and I mean, I worked in forestry for 30 years. I, I do understand weather and meteorologists to a certain point that you, you see what the stuff is doing, you give good indication, you forecast it, and then you watch and see what develops. Sometimes they go faster, sometimes they go slower. Sometimes they look like they're going to be a doozy and then they peter out and sometimes they don't. So like I, I get all that. But it is fun to watch. So I watched the forecast and it was going to be just beautiful days. So here, I'm going to interrupt my own story for a second. Um, I decided that I'm going to cut the top half of this piece of paper instead of the bottom half just because I that's the chunk I want. So whichever way works for you. So originally it was going to be a very nice week and Wednesday was going to be rainy and then it was going to be three days of rain and then it was going to be five days of rain in a row and then it was going to be two days of rain and a day off and then three days of rain and then there was going to be some rain snow mix and like I've been watching the forecast all week because I'm supposed to be the, the farmer's market and more opens on Sunday I'm supposed to do my inaugural farmer's market of the year and so I've been watching so today when I looked it's now today that's going to rain and like, I think we'll actually get rain, rain. And then Saturday, I think showers. But when it comes to springtime and it all the snow has melted, the snow mold is still around a little bit, but most of that I think is the wind has taken care of, but it's just brown. And I cannot wait for to pour rain and everything to get clean and green and buds to, oh, just can't wait. I'm so excited about the idea that it's gonna rain. Um, now I'm not excited about the idea that I have a puppy that is going to be coming in from the yard and the, and walks and stuff in the rain because I remember how much fun that was. Um, but I'm still very excited about the rain and the puppy. He's awesome. Okay, I could talk all about the puppy, so I'm not going to. So we're gonna. Rascal is is awesome. So um, don't get me started. I'll, I'll be just just like a proud mama. I'll show you all the pictures. And, um, I don't need to score this with my, I mean, I could with my bone folder, but I don't need it to be like crisp, crisp, crisp because it holds together well. So this is what I've done. I've taken my piece, four and a half by four and a quarter, and I've folded all of those and I'm folding them all the same way, right? Just folding them all as mounts. And then I have my little half inch strip. And so you see when they're all folded together, there's my tower and there's my, oops, my funky green inside, which you can kind of see. If I had done this as the inside, you would, it would have just kind of looked white, right? I wanted nice bold inside. So feel free to use. Ooh, I did when I did this other card. I used this glue, and I use this glue on absolutely everything. I had glue, um, but you had to keep waiting in between to like let it set up. And I think maybe that's part of my problem with with white glue is patience. But this uh, Tombow glue is awesome, and it, it is a bit more forgiving. So um, if you need a little bit more forgiving, go with that. Me, I'm going to live on the edge and go right with my favorite tear and tape. So here's the thing. We want this nice and snug. So we're going to put our tear and tape right next to the seam. Where'd my poker go? And I'm sound effects that they just make everything work better. And I'm going to fold this up. Now, you want this to be nice and square. Then, so I have my adhesive here, which I just peel the back off of. So lay this down with one piece up. If you have done this right, this will work all the time. There's so many cards I've seen, and, and even on this other one, when we do something else, folding it in half like this and folding it over is what you want to do so that you can get it square. Because in the end, you want your cold, your cord. Let's try that again. You want your card to fold. I'll, I'll make those all separate words. Um, completely flat in your envelope or as flat as it could be with all the embellishments you put on it. So by doing this, my card is now perfectly flat, right? So if I had tried to just do it as a box, I might've got it just like even just a little bit off and it would have been, you know, like this. So you don't want that because you want it as flat as possible. So by doing what I did, by laying it down and just folding it over onto itself, I got it as flat as I could. So, oops, there's my tower. Step one's done. Now, I watched the video for making this card and as she's doing it, I'm thinking to myself, why wouldn't you put the paper on first? <laughs> um, and she didn't. And so then I made the card and I, and as I'm, so I put all the panels on the tower 
I didn't have the DSP on them. And then I put the DSP on afterwards. Now, like I said, I was using glue. So it was very easy because you just kind of lay it there, go like this into place and then, you know, pat, 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 pat. But I'm going to see if the reason she didn't put the DSP on first is because that's a really bad idea. So actually, you know what? I can tell already why she didn't put the DSP on first. Oh, I think I can do it. So, so here's, look at me being bold and going out there. Okay, so here's the thing. You have to put, <laughs> I may abandon this part way through and just put it together and finish the DSP. We're about to find out. Um, I'm sorry, that's what it's coming up. I'll walk away. Okay, so here's the thing. The first one is easy. This is my front panel. I'm going to get it all nice and centered there. Okay, so here's my front panel, which is here. Now to put this other piece on, I need to put it on the back of the last panel. <laughs> so this is where it's going to start to be like, oh, okay, now I get it. But I think if I'm going to set this off to the side, so if I do it this way, so here's my front panel, and then I'm going to flip it over. So this is where these are going to go. So this one. And I'm putting, I'm putting adhesive corner to corner on all four pieces. I'm not just cheaping out on the adhesive on this one, and I'm trying to get it as secure as I can. Now, I know what the spacing on these is, which is why I think this is going to work. Oops, that's the right way. Yes. Um, because as long as I maintain my spacing, and as long as I push this piece all the way over, when I stick it onto the tower, oh, well, look at that one. <laughs> it happens to be the exact same piece of paper. When I stick it onto the tower, though, it'll it'll be where it's supposed to be, right? So I think this will work. So this is one. So then this is the one that goes with it. So this is why you just want to keep your stuff in order. And like I said, I'm putting it corner to corner because this is um, an interactive card. So when you make a card that moves, people go to move the card. They're going to flip it around back and forth, back and forth and move the card. So you want to make sure that all your pieces are as secure as possible and there's nothing to catch. Okay, so now we're going to flip this one over and I'm going to take my next set down. Um, and this is the one that's going to go on the back of this one. Um, I think with, if, even if you had put the seal on and you had done it the other way, I think you'd still be able to position them. You just, you just have to, you know, find the way. Um, and I don't think you can see, no, you can't see the, the edge of my desk is right here, like right in front of me. Um, here, let's pretend this is the edge of my desk. So I know at one point when I was trying to like rub the paper, you can also just do this, right? And set your card down to rub on the paper. So even if you can't completely lay it flat or um, if, it, if it seems a little awkward to put it on after the fact, you could find ways to do it. But I think this is going to work. Um, if you're not sure of your spacing or your patterns or anything like that, then yes, it probably is easier just to put the thing together first and then decorate it. But I already did that one. So now I got to try it this way. So we flip that one over. We flip this one over. And we're down to our last combination. This is our, our moody, stormy sky piece of paper, is what it looks like to me. I, I just realized now that I did not put my silicone mat, which is what I normally craft on. I didn't put it on the table. So just try not to glue the, glue the paper to the wood. Oh, yes. Okay. I was going to say, wait a minute, I'm missing something. Nope. I followed. I followed myself. I'm good. Okay. So then, so this is the back. The last panel, the one to the left, I guess, of my starting point. So this is where my starting piece is going to go. So that's where I was thinking I have a piece left over, but nope. And I was just waiting to figure out which was this piece of cardstock. So I now have this one. So if I have calculated correctly, this is this one. And I have a deck of cards. And if I've done this right, this is going to work. Now, 
what I'm going to do. Okay, so like I said, I used glue the last time, but this time I'm using tear and tape for everything, so I don't have to wait in between. So I don't ever like to just put one. If I'm if I'm putting any kind of anything big on a card, and if you just put one, if you just put one glue dot or one embellishment, or, or like one strip down the middle, I find that things tend to wobble or spin. Now you don't necessarily want that, and on most cards, you know maybe you wouldn't even notice it. But on this card, like I said, people are going to be moving this card. So I think you want to make sure that you, you don't have that. So when I did it the first time, I had it laying down. And, and I mean, for the first one, it's super easy. Here's the little seam. I can just lay my, my card down here because it doesn't matter where you start on this, right? You're just doing it. Make sure that I'm even on top and bottom. Boom, card down. Right? So there's my, my first one. But then now when I start to go and do the next ones. Um, I don't I don't want to lay this flat because if I lay this flat, my thing tends to pull away and I want to make sure and you can see it on this one a little bit here. That's fine. You can see it on this one. Sorry, that was a rather rapid move. You can sort of see the strip here because this thing slid over and it didn't go as far as I wanted here. So that's better than being hanging over because if it's hanging over, you're never going to get your card to go flat. But I still it bugs me. I don't want to see that. <laughs> So what I want to do is I want to put my two strips, and I happen to know from just by looking that I'm going to put one right close to the edge and then put a little space in between and put one over, and I'm still going to have like a space before I get to the, to the tower in the middle. So I'm going to peel these little bad boys off. Now, so far, I have managed to keep my paper straight. Oh, see here, we're back to that one again. Um, so I'm just making sure I'm still doing it right. Okay, so this time what I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna go like this and I'm gonna hold my card up. And basically what I'm doing is I'm pushing this right into the, let's just call it what it is, right into the crotch of the card. And I'm gonna push it over as I, as I do this. This will hold it so that I can get it like straight. And I'm gonna push it over like this. And then I'm gonna squeeze it down because now I don't have that gap, but at the same time, and you'll just double check it. Um, my card will go flat, it folds both ways, but I don't have that little bit peeking through that I didn't want. So that worked for me. And look at this, I'm still on, I'm still on track. My paper is still all matching up. Uh, but like I said, <clears throat> I see that as the why you don't put it on ahead of time. If you were doing this, and I, I can see a reason where you would do, because I didn't take a ton of paper. What did I say? Two person. You could easily do, like it's not even a full sheet of 12 by 12. You could easily do this, all of this DSP exactly the same if for some reason you wanted it. To, I can actually see with the brick wall and then having, <clears throat> excuse me, having each different panel be like graffiti or something. That'd be cool. And then the whole thing would just like, like, you know, total Pink Floyd. <laughs> Another stamp on the wall. Um, I can see where you could do that. So if you were doing, <clears throat> so, excuse me, if you were doing all of yours the same, or if it didn't matter what order they went, or, or if they were all wood, like if this little skinny panel was all the same, and these were the only ones that changed, um, then you would be fine to uh, to do them ahead of time. It wouldn't it wouldn't involve that much thought, right? Like you just whip them around the same. For some reason, I must not have folded this straight because some reason I'm seeing this like glaring white piece of, of DSP coming up here. So I am just going to. Trim that as we go. Not did a very good job of trimming it. I will fix that later. Okay, and we're down to our last panel. And as luck would have it, <laughs> all of our DSP is still where it's supposed to be. So I'm just going to put my last little piece on here. And get those. I, it's so funny. By the time I'm done, I have adhesive backs, little clips of paper. Um, the tear and, tip ba tear and tape backing. I have pieces all over the desk. The end of each craft process, that's what it is. It's garbage collection day. Okay, and I'm gonna do the same thing on the last one. Because why change now? I'm four panels deep. There we go. So there we go. That's how easy it was to put together this pinwheel card. So it, it looks intimidating. And, and as per most cards, the intimidation comes with the decorating. So here's my starting card. 
because something must have shifted as I did this. I don't know what I did, but okay. So here's my starting panel, which I love. And then, like I said, you can flip, flip. It's so much fun that you get to do that too, right? And then there's this when you're done. So you want to keep the opposite panels, this, I guess, the same. Um, so that when you fold these, this flat, it actually stays flat. So you don't want anything bulky in here or in, like, right? We're going to make our pop-ups. If they go in, they go in these two. If you put them like this, oops, sorry, like this, then your card's not going to lay flat. This is, this is the starting point of the card. And you see how important it was that that was flat. So now we need to keep it that way. So you'll notice on this card, I did put a bit of a bulky bow because I love this ribbon. This ribbon carried over. I'm very excited about that. Love this ribbon. So I did put the bow on the front of it, but it's fine because this is what's going in the card. This one, I put a little twine bow on, but nothing too, nothing too bulky. So I guess I get, it's all kitty wumpus there. Um, and, and even these, like, you know me, do you notice there's no dimensionals on this card? Like not a one because the card itself has a lot, there we go, has a lot of bulk to it. So I did not put dimensionals. Oh, that's not true. I did right there. I wanted to put it everywhere, <laughs> but I didn't. Um, so I'm keeping these fairly flat. So even these are glued straight down onto the card. This is all down. I just have this nice little treat of a bow at the beginning. Now, what you can do, and you can decorate these however you want. So this one, I was going to do the same thing, right? I have, I have a label. Um, it covers a lot of my thing. That may not be the label I end up using. I'm making Mother's Day cards for the market because um, I only have one mother, so I, I only have to make one for her, but I'm making a bunch more. See, this is the part I like the most is, is the wildflowers and then like the, all the different like foothills and stuff. So I can I can do this. This will make me happy. Oh, my, my little Mother's Day stamp will still fit on there. So, and as for always, I have a, some kind of a case full of bits and pieces that I have used before and maybe kept, maybe not. Why is that folded backwards, I wonder? Hmm. Um, so I will put something to go on there. Oh, and then the pebbles. I love the pebbles. Um, the pebbles did not carry over, sadly. So you have till the end of June to get them. They were back in stock when I looked the last time because they were out of stock for a long time. So I did buy some more. Um, here we go. The pebbles to go with this sweet. I absolutely love them. So I will, like, I would decorate the front a little bit with something. But like I said, we're not going to do it today because I got a 6.45 goal because I have a seven o'clock standing appointment. So the front of the card is going to be similar to this, right? Oops, I want to do that so you can actually see what I'm pointing at, right? It could have a little bit of bulk on the bow if I wanted to, but it's going to be fairly flat. Same on this one. So this one is likely going to have... Um, I can't pick it up. There we go. This tree is not actually from the In the Horizon dies. Um, I just like it. <laughs> so it might go there. It looks kind of forestry. Um, so depending if I want to go like beach, foothills, sky, however I decide I want to do this. Um, oh, there we go. That's some mountains. Do I don't know. I'll put something on here. I have this is also this is from the cabin die. Pretty sure. I love this little tree. So I like to put it out, and like I said, normally I would these things would all be popped up, and, but they're not going to be this time. Some, there we go. We have these trees. I have little cabins. If I could figure, out, these ones are purple. I don't know if I want purple cabins on them, but you never know. But little bits and pieces, right? So I'm going to put a little, some kind of a little scenescape on the back as well by the time I'm done. But then, if I want to add pop-ups to it. It needs to be on these two. So if we look at this as panel one, any kind of a pop out needs to be two and and four, right? So three and one, and one. So the front and the back have to be flat. It's the two middle ones because the way these these are designed, and on the card I I didn't because I they weren't working the way I, I wanted it to. But because um, once they're like once the cards open, they both stand up at the same time, right? Um, and so but they still fold flat. So if you want to do these, you do it on panel two and on panel four. Now, what I'm going to show you is what I should have done. So where'd my front go? Okay, so this is panel two. So what we need for this is just a little strip. This could be anything. I decided to use the tulips instead of just a plain strip of cardstock, but I'm going to show you it on a 
clean the triple card sock just so you get it. Uh, you're not distracted by the tulips. So this piece is three inches by a half an inch. And I've got a, a little, like two little half inch glue tabs. And then I have a quarter inch and a three quarter inch panel. So this is what is going to glue this, this piece down. Now, it kind of, it, oh, here, we'll go this way. It, it's not square. It's intended to be sloped. And then you can stick something on the front of it. So when you do this, it pops open, right? And it looks cool. Now, the one she used, like I said, was the hanging macrame plant, one that I don't know the name of. And so she had like potted plants on some and on her one on her opposite panel, she actually put this at the top because you can do that too. She had it at the top and she had the, the, you know, the macrame plant holder, the cool was hanging down. And I think she had a little plant at the bottom. So you can have it at the top with something hanging down or you can have it at the bottom with something standing up. Now, the, this is an inch and a quarter. And ideally, whatever you put on this should not be that much wider than an inch and a quarter. If it is, you have to kind of offset it and you have to figure out how, how to make it still fit within the cart. So I really wanted to put this big windmill on here. And if, as you notice when I you look at this one, so I tried the windmill, I'm like, it's too big. So I, I stamped one and I cut it out. And then I looked at it and went, it's too small. <laughs> So I went back to trying to figure out how to make this work. So I put on the, my little panel piece and then I thought, well, this is fine. I'll just, I'll just bend the wind, like, you know, and it didn't quite work, but I realized that, like I said, these, these have just little like small connector pieces. So they were a bit pliable in the end, but the more, the more I fold it and take it in and out and play with it, the more beaten up these look. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. So yeah, see, so it's not like from a distance, it looks great. But if you start to look at it too much or the wear and tear, and like I said, these ones, because they didn't fold exactly right the first time, um, there you go. You can see they're all crumpled up. So really, you don't want the person to have to go, oh, that's an awesome card. Just let me tuck everything in. Let me just, nope, just a minute. There, I folded it now. <laughs> or when they, if they go to put it back in an envelope, go, okay, just a minute. Let me just, I just got to, right? So ideally, don't do what I did. So like I said, the two color thing didn't work like I intended. So there's, there's a like warning number one for you. And warning number two is do not try to make this fit if it is too big. If it is too big, it is too big. <laughs> but I will show you how the panels work. As soon as I figure out what I did with it, there we go. Okay, so this is what I want. I'm going to put this little piece of grass in here, and I, or this little piece of the stand up in here. And then my thought was I was going to put grass on it. Uh, but now I'm looking at the grass that I pre-cut and it's a little bit too much like that. So instead, I'm going to put a gate on it. Let me just find the right gate. I'm going to get the one going in the right direction. There we go. So how about I try instead with the gate? We'll see how that works. The important part I want to tell you is how you actually fasten it on. So whichever side you're going to start with, because you can do it either way. You can have you can have this angle going this way, or you can have it angled going this way, depending on how you want to hang it. And this one I would suggest dry fitting. So if you know what dry fitting is, it means put it in place and kind of just hold it and imagine where it's going to go. So this is this is basically where this one's going to look like, right? So if you if you were to dry fit this, oops, not drop it on the ground, you would see that it's sloping into the card. This is how it's going to, because I know where it's going to end up positioned wise. It's going to be like this, sloped into the card. So when you look at this card this way, what you're going to see is this sloping in right here. So what I want to put here, this is great. This is the face that I want to have it on. So this is going to work for me. If you wanted it to go the other way, like you wanted it to hang on this side for or something, then you got to do it the other way, because this is when you dry fit it, it's going to slope. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. And I'm going to do it with my tear and tape again. So these are the two glue tabs. And if you're using white glue, definitely do one at a time. But because I'm using tear and tape, I'm going to do them both at the same time. Now you notice, because this tape is wider, I can't, one is not wide enough, two is too wide. So I put the first one down, I tore the backing off, and then I put this over top of it. We'll leave that one on for now. So it's doubled up in the middle, but it's single file on either end. So now it's the width of the card. 
You can also, if, if your piece is, if this is too wide, you just peel it off and like fold it over. But in this case, I'm looking for more, not less. So this one, I can also just lift it up a little bit, stick the tear and tape underneath it and put it back down again. If it's going to, uh, if I think I'm gonna accidentally stick it somewhere I don't want to. Now let's see if I can get the camera to focus. Let's see if I can focus. <laughs> Gotta move this out of my way. There we go. All you can see is my thumbs, right? Okay, so I put a piece down underneath and then I just kind of put this back. So this way I'm ready for my tear and tape on that one, but I'm not gonna catch it on everything in the meantime. So I have my tab. So this is how I'm starting, right? I want it to slope inward, I want the big. So really, whichever side you want your thing facing, this is where you start. So you have to start with the big panel next to the tab. I'm going to put it in the corner. Now you can put this in the middle. You can put it wherever you want, bottom corner. So I'm going to put this just inside. Make sure it's not overlapping because you'll make it so your card doesn't close. I'm going to put it in there and I'm going to get it nice square. I'm going to squeeze it. So what I'm going to do, and I have to do this, I don't think I can hold it up and do it at the same time. So what I've got now is like half an inch piece that's a pinch tab. So I'm just gonna fold it like this so it's because now is the time. And in order to figure out where this is gonna go on here, the easiest way to do that, and this technique is on many projects, not just this one, is just to fold the card flat. So I've got it ready. I have it adhesived up and I'm just gonna fold the card over and make sure it's lined up. Oops, keep going off camera. And then I'm just gonna give it a little squeeze. So now I know it's lined up where it's supposed to be. Because if you try to guess where this is gonna go, or like it, it, you miss. But if you do it this way, of course you're gonna hit it. There it is. So now I have my little, my little gate thingy. So now it's just a matter of putting your gate on or whatever it is you're sticking to it. So I'm gonna give this one a little bit of dimension here. Um, so my gate's going to go here. Now again, dry fitting is your friend. My gate is not actually going to work very well because it's not flat on the bottom and I'm going to see too much white. So we're going to go back to my original plan of the grass. Now, here's what we want. We want to make sure that when this card folds this way, because this is the starting piece, right? that this piece of grass is not in the way of the fold. Now, in this case, this piece of grass, if you look at it here, you can see that the fold is right here. That's how much this piece of grass is gonna stick out. Now, it's fine if it sticks out to here because it, it won't be in the way of the fold, but you obviously can't push it all the way over because this is as far as it can go. The other option is, so when I look at it like this and I think, oh, I'll put it over like this. Nope, because when you go to fold, this isn't going to work. Now you might be able to, and again, I would try this because I'm manhandling, but you might be able to just bend it, like score it. Um, if you glue this piece on and it will just, it will just fold with the card or you could just trim it. Um, what I'm going to try, because I think it'll work, is I'm going to wrap it around. I'm just going like, to roughly put it there. I'm gonna go like this, and I don't want this thing pushing off. So I know I need to just trim this little bit off the top. So there we go, I'm gonna trim this little bit. And then, now I do need my silicone mat, or I will for sure tape this thing to the desk. And now I'm going to, see this is the beauty of the silicone mat. You don't tape your piece of paper to the desk. And then, so I've hit all the, I've hit all the biggest chunks of where I could put adhesive. And then with this super duper handy take your pick tool, which I still call the pokey tool, which is better than what I originally called it, which was the pick your nose tool, because as soon as I heard take your pick, that's what it made me think of. 
Um, and all I'm doing is because there's a few places there where I went off the edge because that thing is what, three eighths of an inch wide? There we go. So now I have adhesive where I want it. And I got a bit of a fold here where I just kind of like manually creased it. Oops, there we go. So now I'm going to put this back on here again. And I'm going down to the bottom. And now I'm not sure how I'm going to make this look better, but I don't really want to see all that white cardstock. But for the purpose of this, I'm going to just keep going so you can see what I did. So now I have my graph. So now when this card opens, I have my grass there. And it looks really cool. <laughs> now this is too small. So this, this is the thing with um, when you're the other thing with planning. When you pick your pattern and when whatever you're going to do, because like I said, the first one here, I'll do it on this one. The first one was super easy, right? I had a nice big label. I, I stamped off on the tulips and then I stamped full strength ink with this because I just wanted these kind of in the background. And this is a hint. Hey, people, there's tulips coming. Um, these little brass butterflies that I love. And then, like I said, this, I had plans for this one, which filled up this card piece. And I knew that this one was going to fill up because I had these, oops, sorry, did it again. I had these nice big flowers that I had cut and I like things in threes, right? So I'm like, oh, here's my three pretty flowers. And then when I got to the last one, originally I just had the bike <laughs> and I wasn't sure what was going to go with the bike. And I ended up having to put this label here and then this, which was the reject from the, the first one and my bike, because all of these things seem too small on this panel. So for sure, when you're picking your DSP or your embellishments, you want to plan. I'm going to make one of these with the, the sports paper because all those big banners and everything, oh, it's going to look awesome. Um, so this one, if I just put the grass on, it's a little stark for my liking. I would also like instinct is to put some nice little pebbles along the grass, but I want to make sure that I can fold this like this and fold it flat. So the last place I want pebbles is where I've just put this bulk. So now if I wanted to put some pebbles on here, I could put some pebbles here because when you look at it this way, it's, it's already got the bulk, right? So a little bit of pebbles here is not gonna matter. Um, but I don't wanna load this up. I wanna keep this fairly flat. So in the end, because this looks kind of marshy to me, I'm gonna pick my, my scraggly little marsh tree here, a little black spruce. I'm gonna maybe put him on here. Maybe I'll put another one over there. Um, I could have, if I'd been thinking, um, I could have stamped on the paper, although I could still stamp on the paper. I have this uh, awesome, I have it all ready to go. I just didn't use it. Um, that stamp, I have my lovely birds, my M birds, which I have to do that every time I do this, I'm like, is this the right way? And I have to look at the, all of them to see and make sure, because when I look at it this way, some of them seem like they're right, but they're really not. Yes, okay, so this way, none of them are upside down. So I could really, I could stamp some birds on here or stamp across here, you know, whatever. But yeah, each panel, I like this one's going to need a bit more. Now, like I said, if I wanted to do another one of these, don't do it on this one. Skip one, go to the next one. This is the one you could do it on. Okay, so I'm going to finish decorating this before Saturday when I take my blog and I will have some final pictures of it. But you get to see the pinwheel in action here. I'm going to use the one that's finished. The pinwheel in action. Um, and I do like the like the little sneak peek that's coming out of here. But again, this this piece is just too big. It was disappointingly too big. So start with your first one. You can go two. This one needs a little tucking. Three, four. Stands up nice on the desk. Oops, that's not my first one. Four. Fits nice in the envelope for mailing. As long as you don't have pesky windmill blades sticking out. Ta da! There you have it, folks. Pinwheel card. I went a little bit over, but I'm going to end just in time for any of you who are uh, taking part in the second tea of the TNT show and going to catch uh, Tamara live. Go quickly. You've only got a couple minutes before she's on. <laughs> Thanks for joining me, everybody. Have a great Tuesday, and I will uh, see you on Thursday. Thursday. What are we doing Thursday? Treat holders. Mother's Day treat holders. See you back here at seven. Thanks, everyone. Have a great night.